simple biomechanics. Learning objectives. At the end of this chapter, you should be able to understand the concepts of force, mass, and acceleration, identify and explain the forces acting upon, firstly, a moving performer, second, a sprinter in the blocks, and third, an object flying through the air. Identify and draw the three classes of levers. We have first class, second class, and third class lever. Simple Biomechanics Biomechanics is the science of movement of a living body, including how muscles, bones, tendons, and ligaments work together to produce movement. An understanding of biomechanics enables you to understand perfect technique of any sporting activity. Starting with motion and force, we will begin to understand that we need to be able to move the body in order to carry out all sporting techniques and that any movement is produced by force. Now we'll see the principles of force. What is a force? A force is a push or a pull which alters the state of motion of a body and it is measured in newtons. A force can cause a body at rest to move, can cause a moving body to change direction, accelerate or decelerate, and also can change an object's shape. Now we'll see the Newton's law of motion. The Newton's law of motion describes the relationship between a body and the forces acting upon it and its motion in response to those forces. We have three laws of motion. Now we'll see the Newton's first law of motion, which is also known as the law of inertia. The first law of motion states, a body at rest will remain at rest, and a body in motion will remain in motion unless it is acted upon by an external force. This simply means that things cannot start, stop, or change direction all by themselves. It takes some force acting on them from the outside to cause such a change. This property of massive bodies to resist changes in their state of motion is sometimes called inertia. Now we'll see the Newton's second law of motion, which is the law of acceleration. It states that the acceleration of a body is directly proportional to the force causing it, and the acceleration takes place in the direction in which that force acts. So we have the equation F is equal to m, where F is the force generated, M is for mass of the body and A for acceleration. Newton's third law of motion, which is the action-reaction law. The third law states that all forces between two objects exit, exist in equal magnitude and opposite direction. If one object A exerts a force Fa on a second object B, then B simultaneously exerts a force Fb on A, and the two forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction.
more simply to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction now we'll see the applications of force the newton's first law will take an example of a sprinter the sprinter in the set position in the blocks will remain stationary unless a force is exerted upon the blocks the force exerted must be greater enough to overcome this inertia and in doing so the sprinter will move forward out of the blocks. Now application for the second law. Newton's second law, after about 5 seconds of a 100 meter sprint, we would expect the sprinter to have reached maximum velocity and to remain at this constant velocity, the athlete starts to slow down. Now for the application of Newton's third law, the sprinter on the blocks experienced a force propelling him forward. Now we'll move to levers. A lever is a simple machine that makes work easier for use. It involves moving a load around a pivot using a force. Many of our basic tools use levers, including scissors, hammer, nutcrackers, and tongs. A lever depends on three main components. Number one, it is a pivot also known as the fulcrum. Second, the weight to be moved, that is the resistance. And third, a source of energy, which is called effort or force. There are three clauses of lever, and each is classified depending upon where the fulcrum, the load, and the effort are. Types of lever in the body. In your body, muscles, joints, and bones act together as lever systems. The lever is a bone, the fulcrum is usually a joint, the load is the weight of the body part being moved, plus any weight it is carrying, effort is supplied by muscles contracting. The muscle tendons act like the thread in your lever. Now we'll see the first close lever. The fulcrum is between the effort and the load. Both effort and load are in the same direction. Now an example for leather in the body. Raising your head shows a first class leather in action. Where the skull acts as the lever, the fulcrum is the joint between your skull and atlas. The load is the weight of the head. It pulls the head forward. The effort is supplied by the trapezius muscle. When it contracts, it pulls the head back. Now a sporting, a sporting example of first class level. When an athlete throws a javelin, the way the arm moves is a good example of a first class level in action. Where the elbow is the fulcrum, the effort is supplied by the biceps and triceps which are both contracted to keep the arm straight and the javelin is the load. Now we'll move to second class lever. 
The second close lever, the fulcrum is at one end of the lever, the load is in the middle of the lever, and the effort is at the opposite end of the lever to the fulcrum with the direction of effort opposite the load. Standing on your toes shows a second class lever in action. Your heel bone acts as the lever. The fulcrum is the point of contact between the toes and ground. The load is the weight of your body. The effort is supplied by the gastrocnemius muscle that pulls on your heel bone. It is attached to it by the archive tendon. Now a sporting example of second class lever. When an athlete takes off in long jump is a good example of the second class lever. The effort produced by the muscles, which is relatively small, is able to drive the full weight of the athlete of the ground. Now lastly, the third class lever. Like second order levers, the fulcrum and load are at opposite ends of the lever, but the effort is off center of the lever towards the fulcrum. This is not as efficient as second order levers, but small muscle movement creates long lever movement. For example, lifting a weight shows a third class lever in action, where the radius and ulna act as the lever, the fulcrum is the elbow joint, the load is the weight of the lower arm plus the weight being lifted and the effort is supplied by the biceps contraction. An example of third class lever in sports. The motion of a tennis serve is an example of the third class lever. Your grip on your racket is the fulcrum. The force being applied is your racket swing and the load is the contact with the ball that your racket makes. Thank you for your kind attention.